Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, welcome to Inspired. My name is Mark Bunn and today we're going to be talking about ancient wisdom for modern business health. I've always been fascinated by the Eastern traditions of healthcare, as well as the long-living cultures, the traditional cultures throughout time, and the great spiritual masters who have taught us so much about mind, body and spirit. What I do today is really combine those wisdoms with the latest modern scientific knowledge to help people make the shift towards healthier, happier, more productive and meaningful working lives. So today in this episode, Ancient Wisdom for Modern Business Health, what we're going to look at is our natural state of functioning, what I call our natural high state. Do you remember as a little kid, four or five years old, boundless energy, creativity, you loved life, you didn't worry about things, no stress, jumping puddles, whatever you wanted to do, it was right there. This is our natural state of functioning according to the ancient Eastern traditions. So what we want to do is actually look at that based on these ancient timeless wisdoms of life. And you might think, well, we're in a modern world. When we think of our businesses, we're always looking for what's new. What's the latest thing to drive our businesses? But sometimes we forget that these time-honoured wisdoms of life have been around for many thousands of years and they can help us in our businesses today. Did you know that positive psychology is just really glimpsing the ancient wisdom of the Stoics that for thousands of years have understood more about how to give our lives meaning and purpose and create happiness than we've already uncovered. The ancient Greek philosophers, Aristotle, Plato, knew how to use exercise to unfold creativity and inner intuition. And of course, we've had yogic masters and great spiritual adepts that have had simple meditation techniques to expand the conscious mind and to develop inner insight, intuition, and even higher states of consciousness. All these things can be practically applied to our businesses today to not only make them more effective, business more successful, but to ensure our health and happiness at the same time. So today we're going to look at three really important what I call waves of change. Things that I believe are going to revolutionise business over the next decade based on these ancient principles but practically applied so they can use them in your busy lives today. Number one, wave of change is based around what we call the natural cycles. I think you'd agree that basically today there's not much more we can do in terms of time. 24-7 business, everything's go, go, go. What we can do, rather than just changing what and how much we do, is when we do it. And that's where this ancient science of natural cycles comes in. If you were to analyse these long-living healthy cultures throughout time, these high-performing individuals, what they understand is something called the natural laws of nature or the natural cycles of life. Think about our universe. We have day, we have night, we have summer, we have winter. If I drop this pen, the law of gravity dictates that that pen will fall to the ground every single time. It's a fundamental immutable law of nature. It's a fundamental immutable law of nature that if you live in Australia, you are three times as intelligent as anyone else in the world. So the analogy is, it's like a surfer riding a wave. You ask any top surfer, whether it's Kelly Slater, Mick Fanning, Lane Beachley, Stephanie Gilmore, notice all the Australians, they will tell you there's actually one key to surfing. Timing. If you catch a wave when the wave is at its peak, the wave does all the work. The experience for a great surfer is it's fun, it's enjoyable, it's exhilarating, time is your life. Unless they're under the age of 22 when they'll generally say it's sick, radical, cool dude. But it's a great experience because they get the timing right. 
When I go surfing, I'm usually paddling out about here when the wave's crashing down about here. Because I get the timing wrong, the experience for me is hard work, mouthful of water, bloody surfing, never going to do that again. According to the ancient Eastern teachers, for thousands of years, they tell us that our lives and our ability to enjoy high business success consistently throughout time is exactly the same. They tell us that our minds and bodies go through six four-hour cycles every single day. That if we can adjust when we eat our food, when we do our exercise, when we get our sleep, and when we do different parts of our business and working life, if we've got that flexibility, we'll experience work and life with more energy, less stress, better motivation, clearer thinking, healthier weight management throughout our life. If we violate these cycles on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, we'll tend to experience work and life with less energy, more stress, poor sleep, less motivation, and maybe one or two extra kilograms or pounds around our waist or belly each and every year. So what we want to do is actually look at when these cycles occur. Before we had Oprah and Dr Phil to tell us how to live our lives, these traditional cultures who are more connected to the land and nature and Mother Earth would observe over time and distance that the same cycles and rhythms that govern everything out there are mirrored by the cycles and rhythms that govern everything in here. They had ancient sayings such as, as is the cosmic body, so is the human body. As is the atom, so is the universe. They understood that everything was connected and we humans were also connected to these natural cycles. When we live in tune with them, it's like swimming with the tide or the currents. When we violate them, it's like trying to swim against the currents or into the waves. Hard work, difficult, we want to reverse that. So it'd be interesting to see when these cycles occur. Funnily enough, although today we spend thousands, millions, sometimes trillions of dollars analysing things like fats and calories and antioxidants, they understood in past times that we can actually eat the best food in the world, natural, fresh, organic. But that food, unless it is first burnt, cooked, digested, will not do one of three things. It won't give us energy and vitality, which we need for business success. It won't build up healthy cells, tissues and organs that don't get so diseased as we age. And three, it won't get into a form that our bodies recognise as a waste product, so we won't eliminate it from our bodies. And when we don't eliminate stuff, of course, we store it, don't we? Some it's in the joints, some it's in the heart, some it's in the brain, the neurons of the brain, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. We blokes tend to store it a bit more here, ladies a bit more here. But wherever we store it, it's no good. Blocks the channels of the body up and all our decision making, clarity of thinking start to decline. So in seminars, I often ask people, when traditionally in these time-honoured cultures, and you think of Asia today, you think of Europe, even going back a few years, when traditionally do they eat their main meal of the day? And the answer, of course, is the middle of the day, lunchtime. At lunchtime, the sun, which represents energy, dynamism, activity, is at its peak, the midday sun. Interestingly, the ancient teachers tell us that our internal sun, the digestive fire that cooks our food, is also at its peak. It's like this. The food comes in, gets digested, absorbed, assimilated, gives us energy and vitality when we need it during the day. We're at work, we're busy. What do we often do in a Western culture in work at lunchtime? You know, we've got to get that phone call off, still in the team meeting, we've got to get that important email off. We can't work out why our keyboard's not working because little bits of rice cake are falling down and wedging in between the keys of our keyboard. But we finally get home at 6 or 7 or 8 o'clock at night when the body's natural cycle is slowing down in readiness for sleep and the digestive fire that cooks our food is also winding down in readiness for sleep, eventually. So what do we do? We eat, yeah? 
We've been working hard all day. Time to nourish ourselves. Steak and three veg, chicken parmigiana. Would you like some dessert with that? It'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? So we eat as much as we can, loosen the belt buckle, fall off the table, go to bed. A couple of hours later, we sleep like a log. But for those six, seven or eight hours, all our body's resources are doing what? Simply going here. Instead of going here and here and here and here to get rid of the stress, to get rid of the fatigue, to detox our livers, to re revitalise our kidneys, to have us bouncing out of bed first thing in the morning, feeling light, clear, energised, motivated for the new day, clear thinking, so we can prioritise, plan our day for maximum effectiveness. Instead, we wake up with snooze buttonitis, we need hot showers, caffeine, anything to get us into the land of living. Why? Because we've actually violated one of the most fundamental natural cycles there is. So what I want to do is actually look at how we can reverse this, to use this ancient understanding of natural cycles to improve our energy, our sleep, our vitality. And so we're going to look at a couple of really key important aspects to this. Because remember again, it's not what we do, but over the coming decade, I believe it's going to be when we do things. I can guarantee anyone watching today that you can eat more calories than you currently do and still lose weight by changing when you eat those calories. We can sleep less than we currently do and get more rejuvenation and inner cleansing depending on when we get that sleep. And so I want to look at a couple of these really key areas. And the first one is what we do early in the morning. Generally, the advice over the last decade or two from modern Western health science has been that breakfast should be the most important meal of our day. I want you to wrap up that advice, maybe in some newspaper, put it in a garbage bag, walk out to the nearest window, preferably facing the neighbours you don't like so much, and throw it out as far as you can. And understand that never ever in the history of the longest living, healthiest cultures throughout time has breakfast ever been considered the most important or substantial meal of the day. We're not going to go into the details of why that is, but two key things we want to look at instead of a large breakfast first thing in the morning that we want to try and do. And the first one is exercise. If we were to look at many of the top business leaders, world-class athletes, high-level achievers throughout different industries, a very large majority start their day with activity or exercise. From an ancient perspective, we understand that it reverses or balances out the natural cycle in the morning. The longer we sleep in the early hours, the more likely we are to feel heavy, dull, and actually gain weight. So exercise is absolutely essential. If you don't have the time to go to the gym for an hour or do a 45 minute yoga class, at least get some activity into your day. Make a few phone calls before you get into the office. Five or 10 minutes of activity at a bare minimum to get the metabolism going. This does not count, okay? It's good for the dog. Second key thing we want to do early in the morning is something we've distanced ourselves from over the last decade or two. And it is early morning sunlight. Traditional cultures, the very first thing they would do to start each day would be to go outside and look directly at the early morning sun. No sunglasses. Why would they do that? Were they crazy? No, they understood that in the first 45 minutes of sunrise, the sun will do three very important things. One, stimulate our entire body clock, particularly our sleep-wake cycle. The whole sleep-wake cycle is largely dependent on the cycles of natural sunlight and darkness. So anyone who can't get, can't get to sleep at 10, 10.30 at night, one of the first things I recommend is to see if they are getting natural full spectrum sunlight most mornings of the week. Now you might say, oh, well, I live in North America, Canada, Northern Europe, the United Kingdom, and we just don't have any sunlight at certain times of the year. And this is very important. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.